one. So this happened my senior year of college over a year ago. I lived in a college neighborhood surrounded by other kids that went to my school, with the exception of a family or two. We knew our neighbors well and everyone was fairly civil with one another. We did keep in mind, though, that this was a college area and some sketchy things could happen. I think it was May when the first break-in happened. I woke up one morning to some text in my group message telling me that my next-door neighbor's house had been broken into. They had multiple things stolen, a backpack with a laptop and textbooks inside, a gaming console, etc. They had notified the police and they were on the case. This obviously set my roommate and I into a little bit of a panic because we were a house of four girls, and none of us being wildly brave by any means. We decided the best we could do was make sure our door was locked at all times, whether we were home or not, so that's what we did. Flash forward a couple days later. My roommate Maggie and I were the only two home out of the four who lived in the house. We stayed up late watching movies as we always did, and then I headed off to my room to go to bed while Maggie stayed on the couch. We were, I'm not pleased to admit, the worst at turning off lights and saving electricity. So this night, the light in the kitchen, living room, and hallway were all on. Sorry, I know we got better about turning lights off eventually. I slept soundly through the next night, and woke up as the sun shone through the cracks in my blinds the next morning. As usual, after I woke up, I spent about ten minutes in bed on my phone before getting up to use the bathroom. On my way back into my bedroom, I noticed that my blinds were tapping slightly against my window frame, suggesting that there was a breeze. My fan was off, and my window was closed. So there should have been no movement, right? Well, right, if my window had been closed. When I drew open my blinds, I was absolutely horrified to see that my bedroom window had been completely open all night. Or at least, since after I had gone to sleep. I knew that my window was shut when I'd went to sleep the night before, and there is something wildly upsetting about the fact that my bed is also pushed up on the wall right against my window. So perfectly, in fact, that I used to sit in my window on my bed, with my feet completely able to touch the grass below. That's how low this window is. And that's how close my bed is. Now at this point I was frantic. I ran out into the living room to see if Maggie was okay, and if she had noticed anything, or heard anything throughout the night. She wasn't home, so I assumed she had gone to class. I texted her immediately, explaining what had happened and asking all of my questions. She responded lightning fast. She had woken up this morning in the living room, and when she walked into her bedroom to get ready for class, her window was open. Her desk, which sits right in front of her window, was pushed away from the wall, and her closet doors, which were always open because they jutted right up against the carpet, so they were very hard to open and close, were closed. She said it looked exactly as though someone pushed her desk away from the window to give themselves more room to enter quietly. In an absolute frenzy, I texted my other roommates, who hadn't been home, and my group message alerting them of what had happened. I crawled the house looking to see if any of my things were missing, and when my roommates came home later that day, they did the same. Nothing had been stolen, not even my laptop or my phone, which were both charging on my bed right in front of the window. Not even Maggie's Apple Watch that was sitting on her desk in front of her window. We did call the police, and they came to file a report, but they never followed up with us about it. I asked if they could dust my window for prints, as there had to have been handprints, because the only way to open my window from the outside is to press your palms directly on the glass, and push upward with significant force but they never followed through with doing that either. I'm not sure really what to think of this, as maybe it was a planned break-in, but they didn't think I would be asleep at their point of entry. But they entered, we think, through another window nonetheless. So why didn't they take anything? And how did the sounds not wake us up? I was directly next to my window, so they would have had to completely jump over my body to enter my room, so I don't think they did enter from there at least which is a little relieving. Maybe they didn't enter at all, because all the lights were on, and they realized people were home. But our cars were in the driveway, and it did seem as though they entered, because Maggie's closet doors were shut. This was super bizarre to me. I'm just relieved that I've since moved out of that house. I'm pretty annoyed that the police didn't take it very seriously. 
but at least I'm also a little relieved that the people who broke in and die never had to meet. Two. Three years ago, I was living with my then-boyfriend in a one-bedroom apartment in a little mountain town. It was a half-basement unit, so the bottom of all our windows were level with the ground outside. It was also an older apartment, and not all the windows could fully lock. One day, my boyfriend comes home from work while I'm laying on the sofa, and immediately runs up to the window near me and looks out of it frantically. He then goes to look out every other window in the house, then walks around the outside looking in the windows. When he comes back from this confusing exploit, I ask him WTF is going on, and why he's acting that way. I think I just walked up on a dude looking in the window at you. He took off as I walked up, he tells me. This was naturally very unsettling, but after discussing it and considering the time of day, it was about 2pm, and the number of people out and about around the complex at that time, we came to the conclusion that it was just a curious neighbor, or someone passing by happening to glance in. With that, we forgot about it. If only that was the end. For the next couple of months, all stuff happened here and there. Someone would knock on the door occasionally. Then when I went to answer, there was no one there. I'd find things in my apartment that I wasn't familiar with, or things like clothing items would vanish. I didn't really think twice about any of it until one night. My boyfriend and I were arguing around one or two in the morning, and we were being a little loud. We were standing in the kitchen face to face, his back was to an open window, with the blinds up halfway and I was facing it. And made start arguing, I glanced behind him at the window thinking, I saw the reflection of my face in it. The window was open, it wasn't my face. There was a man with his face pressed almost against the window screen watching us. Given the fact that we were arguing and it was late, I thought for a moment it might have been a concerned neighbor walking up to the window to speak to us. A main walkway for the complex was right on the other side of the window, so I spoke to him. Hello? How can I help you? I asked a little aggressively, thinking a neighbor was intruding on our privacy. He responded to this by staring, unwavering and cold, right at me. His face did not change expression, he did not blink or move just looked right at me in a way I have never been looked at before or since. In this instant, I also realized that because of the window being level with the ground, the only way this man's face could be where it was, was if he was laying on the ground outside the apartment, or crouched and contorted to look into the window. My heart sank. I buried my face in my boyfriend's chest and closed my eyes in fear. My boyfriend up to this point thought I was messing with him, when I buried my face in his chest, only then did he say, Is it really someone at the window? I whispered yes to him. He felt my fear and took a moment before he turned around. By the time he did, the man was gone. It was at this point that I started to think about all the little odd occurrences that I'd been experiencing. I assumed the worst. I filed a police report with his description, and my brother loaded my apartment up with weapons to protect me, or at least inform this peeping Tom that I was armed. After that night, myself, my boyfriend, and my brother were on high alert. There were a couple of times when my brother came over that he saw a sketchy dude hanging around, and even one time he saw him at my window. He tried to follow him discreetly, but the guy took off running as soon as my brother stepped in his direction. The last night I had an experience with this man. I was sitting home alone in my sofa. My boyfriend was at work at a restaurant about two blocks away. He had picked me up from work an hour earlier. We had sat on the sofa together a little while when we got home. Then he kissed me and left for work, locking the door behind him. After he left, I continued to sit on the couch on Reddit for a while in silence. After about an hour of me sitting there in silence, I hear a door creak open. It's a small apartment, so to see the bedroom and bathroom doors from the couch, all I had to do was lean a little to the left. I assumed it was one of my cats coming out of my bedroom, so you can imagine my shock when I lean over and see the door that's opening is a door to the water heater closet and small storage space. I look to my right and see both of my cats sleeping soundly at the other end of the couch. I look back to the door and it's still creaking open very slowly. It opens enough for me to see it. A set of fingers wrapped around the door, easing the door ever so gently to open it as quietly as possible. That was gonna be a no from me, dog. 
I ran my ass barefooted out the door, into the snow and down the street to my boyfriend's work. I called the cops. When everyone was back to check out the apartment, he was, of course, gone. After that, my boyfriend and I packed our shit, went to stay with my parents, and six months later we moved 1,000 miles away from that town. That was the end of it. I live a thousand miles away from where this all happened, so part of me thinks there's no way this person could have found me. But last week, I heard a knock on the front door of my apartment. I was expecting a package, so I figured it was a delivery driver and didn't answer. I'd go get the package later. Then they knocked again, and again. The third one made me feel uneasy, so I waited a good twenty minutes to check the door. When I did, there was no package, no note, no nothing. Someone was just knocking. Although it made me uneasy, I didn't initially think back to my stressful experience in my last town. Two days ago, I went out to get groceries. I have a little patio, and I go out there in the mornings to just chill or check on plants a lot. And I've been known to leave it unlocked in the day on accident. Never thought of it as a huge deal. Until I came home from the store two days ago when the deadbolt to my apartment was locked. The deadbolt that can only be locked from the inside of the apartment. Period. I assumed someone robbed me because I dumbly left my patio unlocked. I called my sister. I called my current, new, boyfriend. I waited for people to be with me and I went into my apartment through the sliding glass patio door. Nothing was out of place. Nothing of value was taken. At this point, my heart sank. Nothing was touched, nothing stolen. Someone was inside my apartment just because they wanted to be inside of my apartment. I told my boyfriend about my stalker, and he's not taking this shit lightly like my past boyfriend. I filed a police report. We checked for recording devices and cameras. He put Nest cameras up all over the place, and were on high alert. I really, truly hope this is a coincidence. But if this man really followed me across multiple state lines? There's no one on this earth I'm less interested in meeting. Three. I am an 18-year-old male, 6 foot 1, 190 pounds. I live in Seattle, and I work at a local grocery store, as my father insisted on me getting a job amidst coronavirus, and grocery stores are the few places hiring nowadays. Anyways, I work at 5am and wake up around 4am. I don't mind it because I get off early. It's still dark when I arrive at the store and I always have to call the store and ask for the produce workers to let me in. As I was walking up to the door, I see an average looking man, probably late 30s. He doesn't work at my store and clearly he was tweaking out, moving around in crazy motions on meth or something. It was common to find needles in the bathroom of the store. As I was waiting for the door to be opened, he was facing me about eight feet away, not looking at me, but past me. He was chanting some weird satanic shit, something like, Satan will come, Satan knows. He kept repeating those lines, I was just standing at the door like WTF as this dude on. Someone just get me inside already. Nothing else strange happens at work that day, and I get off at 9am, as I only worked a four hour shift that day. As I'm driving home, I get a call, and the ID said it was from a nearby city. I answer, and I literally just hear a guy breathing. I'm just sitting there thinking this is some corny prank. Since the audio was playing through the speakers in my car, his breathing was amplified, so I'm not sure if it was intentional. I read one time that if someone keeps you on the phone for long enough, they can get your IP address. I'm not certain of this, though. He then says my full name in the tone of a question, but also in a weird, strangely excited kind of way that made me feel extremely uneasy. This was very stupid of me to confirm it was, but I said, yeah, who is this? And then he just pauses and hangs up. I realized a few hours later that he sounded exactly like the satanic dude from this morning. Except sober. I get paranoid fairly easily. But this was a red flag and sent chills down my spine. I tried to call back and the number was, you guessed it, disconnected. The next day I arrive at work with no troubles and leave at 9am. I get home at about 
I see my father's car in the driveway, as he is usually home at this time. The front door to my house was unlocked. I shouldn't think anything of this because my dad was home, right? I walk in, take off my shoes, and call out for my dad because I brought in his mail. So before I explain this next part, you need to understand that many noises people hear or misidentify as something they're truly not. Or their mind is playing games with them, or it's just the house making noises, etc. But there is a very specific noise that my parents' bed frame makes because it's wood, when someone is rolling around in it. I know this sound very well because my room is right next to my parents and my dad is an extremely light sleeper, and any time I drop something or make a relatively loud sound, I can hear him rolling around in his bed because I disturbed him. Okay, continuing on. I call out for my dad as I'm walking up the stairs and there's no response, only that noise of the bed frame moving. I later that day rolled around in the bed to confirm the noise I heard and that you need a significant amount of weight on the bed in order to produce that sound. This was when I got scared as hell. Because my dad wakes up very early and there's no way he was taking a nap at 9.30 a.m. I'm already at the top of the stairs at this point so I burst into my room and closed my door. I listened through the paper-thin walls and I genuinely heard somebody whispering, and then the springs releasing as if someone was sitting on the edge and stood up. If he was whispering, that means there could potentially be two people in my house and I could be in real danger. I instinctually grabbed my dresser and dragged it in front of my door. That thing weighs probably at least 150 pounds, and it took me a little while to drag it in front of my door. My heart was pounding. I was worried the intruder or intruders would catch on to what I was doing and break through my door before I had the chance to do it. I just slammed the dresser down in front of my door to not waste any more time. Nobody was getting through that door. I felt slightly more relaxed and called my dad. I started to get nervous because he didn't answer, but sometimes he went on walks around the neighborhood at this time. Just as I tried to call him, I saw him walking up the street from out of my bedroom window, and shouted that it wasn't safe for him to come into the house. At first he laughed it off and proceeded up the driveway, as nothing like this has ever happened and we live in a somewhat safe area. I repeated myself, but this time I screamed at him, now he knew I was serious. He could see the fear in my eyes. He stepped back a few feet and asked what the hell was going on, and I felt I didn't really have time to explain and just told him to wait. Once I confirmed my father was safe, I called 911 and the intruders next to me must have heard it, because once I got off the phone, they ran downstairs. I was scared for my dad at this point because he was just right outside. I had to move the dresser again from my door, as I was in a panicked state, and I left my room and ran down the stairs to see nothing except my dad, who was still confused, and pointed out that the back door was wide open. The cops got there about 12 minutes later and came up with nothing, no evidence of forced entry, literally nothing, besides the wide open back door and some mud tracked in the house, which really pissed me off. Could the man whispering have been the man who was talking to Satan the other day? How did that man know my name on the phone? Can someone track you if they know your phone number and full name? Were these people trying to abduct me? This only happened five days ago, and I've been scared ever since, worrying they might come back. I also have sleep paralysis, and it's gotten worse lately. And if you've had it before, yeah, it fucking sucks. That's my story. I hope nothing like this happens to any of you. Thanks for listening. And to the satanic worshipper, let's never meet again. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Three True Scary Stories, episode 511. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. I'm setting myself a little challenge this week. I've done it before. I want to see if I can do it again. Uh, I'm going to try and get all my work wrapped up by the end of Tuesday this week. Essentially what that basically means is just I, I, I smush uh, all the off days together. So uh, although I do still have to do some administrative stuff, but there's that, that, that's less involved in that than the, than the, than the recording. Um, and I get all the, the audio recording and that done. So if I can get it down to a science, it makes taking time off easier in, the, easier in the long run. So hopefully that goes well. And also, I'm still waiting. Ooh, I'm getting frustrated now. 
I submitted a design for an all-over zip-up hoodie to Teespring. Um, I'm, I'm kind of crossing my fingers and toes that they accept the design. They said it takes 48 business hours, which I think is an odd way to phrase it. I don't know if that means just like two business days or if it means like four, if they're just counting business hours. And I'm assuming that doesn't count the weekend. So hopefully sometime this week it'll get approved. Because I'm actually quite pleased with the design, plus, you know, zip up hoodie. I've had people requesting them on the, the Health Razor Teespring merchandise store. Okay, and with that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourself.